Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video, I would like to show you how easy it is to go for a micro frontend architectural approach in your Blazor application. And in the example that we will be using throughout this video, we use Blazor server, but what I show you works equally also in Blazor WebAssembly. Before we get started, let's clarify a little bit what micro frontend actually means. So, micro frontend is a frontend architectural pattern in which what you perceive to be as a single and unified application is actually built within or by different self-contained and totally independent application modules that are loaded dynamically by an application host. You can think about this as microservices, but for the frontend. Some of the main benefits of using this micro frontend approach for frontend web development is that you can have potentially different teams working on different frontends or micro frontends on modules at the same time, and the work of one team will not affect the work of other teams. Obviously, if you want, you can even place each micro frontend in a totally independent repository, and you can even have it written in different languages, although I wouldn't really recommend that. If you take a look at this picture here, you can imagine how this would work. So what we have here is first of all an application host, also called sometimes a container or an application shell. And then we have the different independent modules that are developed totally independently and self-contained. They don't need to know anything about the existence of other modules. Now the application host or the application shell or the, con the container is responsible to resolve dynamically all, all the modules that are needed for the front end that the user will perceive as a unified application. So coming back to our Blazor application, we have here this very standard Blazor server template in .NET 7. And the way that I would like to show you how this works is that we will want to take this template that if we look at these pages, we have here different type of components, like we have this index, we have this counter, we have this fetch data and so on. And what we want to achieve is that we want to move basically each of these components into a self-contained, totally independent library, basically, and then add it or use it in this specific application that will serve as our common host. So the first thing that we'll want to do here is to go here and add a new project. And when we add this new project, what we want to add is actually a Razor class library. And let's start by what we have on the index page and let's create this our first very module in this micro frontend approach, which will be the index module as a Razor class library, and then we'll hit create. Now, if we expand this, we will see that it comes actually with some predefined components that we actually don't want to use. So we will simply delete this file and we'll also delete this one. Now on the index, we have two different components that are actually used. We have the survey prompt and we have this index.razor. So what we'll do here is we'll go to our index module and basically recreate them. So let's start with the survey prompt. We add here a new Blazor component and we'll call this Blazor component just like we had it previously, survey prompt. Now what we can do basically is simply copy all the code that we have here in this one and move it in our newly created component. The next component that we have on the index page is the index itself. So let's go here in our new module and add a new Blazor component. And in this case, we'll just simply call this index. And once again, we do exactly the same thing. We just take everything that we have in our index component here in our host, and we move it in our newly created module. Now, what we will do here is basically we can come here and simply delete the survey prompt and also delete, delete this index. Now, before everything works correctly, we need a way in Blazor to instruct it to look for components also in other libraries. So what we need to do here, go to this app.razor, and this is especially very important for the routing part. So what we need to do here is to instruct Blazor that it should look for routes also in other assemblies than this default host that we have here. So we'll, move, we'll create here a li little bit of space and then we add these additional assemblies. And here we can provide a new array of assemblies in which this Blazor host can look for components, basically for routable components in this case. For this index module to be available or visible, obviously we need to add a dependency here and we want to reference an existing project. In this case, we want to reference this index module and then click here, add. Here we still have an error. So what we need to do here is that we're using index module and we'll need to provide the name of one component here, for instance, the index. And then if we look for the assembly in which we have this component and we will also consider all the routes that it finds in that specific assembly. 
So let us run the application and demonstrate that everything still works. So here we have it and you can see that we have this index, everything works correctly. And here is this survey prompt. Obviously the counter and the fetch data are still working because they are still in this same application host. Cool. So now that we have proved that this is actually working and it's feasible, it's time for us to go to the other components and move them into self-contained modules. So let's go first with the counter and let's add here a new project. And once again, we'll have this Razor class library. Let's call it counter module and then let's just click create it. And just like we did previously, what we need to do here is we just need to create a new component. Let's call it Blazor component and we'll call it counter. And we can simply just go here to the counter that we have here. Simply just copy all the code that we have in this component. Come back to our counter module and replace everything with what we have here. And obviously my application is still running, but I'll stop it right now. So now that we have the counter in our dedicated module, we can simply just come here and then click edit and delete. And we can simply just delete this entire counter component as we don't need it anymore in the host. And then what we still need to do here is like we did previously, simply just come here in this array, I'll go to another line and then just use this other counter component. Now what I'll do here to make it easier is I will just copy that and I will place it here. The only thing is that we need to remove this with counter module and we need also a project reference to this. So let's have this reference and let's add counter and then just let's click OK. And in the counter module, what we'll have is the counter itself and the assembly and everything should working should be working fine. So the last thing that we have here as a component, and there's a really good reason why I left it for last, is that we have this fetch data. Now this fetch data component is a little bit different than the other components because this fetch data component actually uses a weather forecast service and injects it and uses this service to get some weather forecasts. So you see that this type of component is a little bit more elaborated because it needs to also fetch some data. In fact, in this data folder, we see that we have this weather forecast and we have this weather forecast service. So what we need to do is basically because this is the entire functionality actually belongs together and we want to ship it in a totally independent module. So let's go on and create here a new project. It will still be a Razor class library and we'll call it weather forecast module and just click it create. Now moving the entire component here means that we also move, need to move also the other classes. So what I'll do here probably is I will try to simply create a new class and I will name it weather forecast. In this class, I will obviously take everything that I have here in this one in the host and I will move it here. Then we have the weather forecast service. So let's also add this class and just get all the functionality that we have in this class and move it to the new one, to the new module. Now, last but not least, what we need to do is to have this weather forecast component. So let's go on and add here a new Blazor component and we'll call this fetch data. And then in this fetch data, obviously what we will do here, we'll come and just copy everything and move it to this new component. So what we'll have here is, okay, using host data, this is not necessary anymore. But other than that, we have the page, which is the route. We have the injection of the word, uh, weather forecast service and then all the functionality that we have also previously. So now what we can do here is we can go here simply to the fetch data component in the host, to the weather forecast service and to the weather forecast. And we can then and delete all these files because we don't need them anymore. Also, we can delete this folder. So now the last thing, wiring everything up together. And this is once again, we need here a dependency. And here we need a reference and we need a reference to this weather forecast module. Last but not least, we need to add this type of weather forecast module fetch data to our additional routes. And to have everything working, we don't have this using host data anymore because we have just removed the entire folder. And we also don't have this builder services at Singleton weather forecast service. And that's the point why I wanted to leave this type of component at the end. Because right now, kind of like we don't want to have in this host the logic to load or to add all those possible services that a certain module uses. Instead, this should be the responsibility of the module itself. So what we will do in this case is we will simply go here and just remove that. 
But obviously, if we remove that, then the regular component will not work. And here is what we'll do to solve this problem. We'll go back to our weather forecast module and here we will add a new class. And in this class or this class, we'll call it well Web Application Builder Extensions. And we'll make this a static class. Now in this one, we'll simply add an extension method on this, on this Web Application Builder that is responsible to register all the services that this module needs with the host where this module will run. The only problem that we still have, as you can see here, is that we have this web application builder and we cannot simply resolve it. And the trick to solve this problem is actually to go over and edit the CS profile. And in this CS profile, the only thing that we need to do here is we need to add an item group and make a framework reference to include Microsoft ASP.NET Core app. So now that we click on save here, we can go back to our service here. And right now you will see that now we have the ability to import the missing references in file. So the thing that we need to do here obviously is right now to register this service and we'll register it as a singleton as it was before and the weather forecast service. Now in our host, and as I said, during the introduction to micro frontends, the host is responsible to know exactly how to load everything that is needed for a certain module to work. So in this case, we will just have this builder register weather forecast module and we'll have everything good to go right now. So let's run the application and make sure that everything still works. So here's the application. We still have this hello world, which is the index. We know this was working before. Now the counter, you see if we click, it works and we have this fetch data. If we go on it, we get all the data that we also had previously. So right now the application is 100% still working. But as you can see, we have moved all the components or the functionalities in self-contained module. And this is how we achieve this type of micro frontends where you can simply isolate all the modules. You can potentially put them in dedicated repositories and then publish them in, as NuGet packages and have these NuGet packages installed in the host and then do exactly the same as we did before. But this will make sure that really every single module can be developed in total independence on the other application. Obviously, the host will be still responsible to provide some common infrastructure for all the module, which I would think about, for instance, authentication, the authentication state provider and uh, the team provider, the uh, layouts and things like that. So this will still be the responsibility of this host. So from my point of view, this is how you can really easily use this concept of micro frontends in Blazor server. Obviously, and as I told before, you can take the exact same procedure and use the same type of Razor class libraries when you have Blazor WebAssembly. Everything will work the same. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're for the first time here. And if you have any type of question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and just leave me a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.